Hello, fellow horror fiends, and welcome to The Horror Within Me, a podcast dedicated to the world of horror. Join us each week as our host explores a new horrifying topic from the many realms of horror, such as film, television, and more, and returns to tell us his terrifying revelations. So sit back, relax, and get ready to face the horrors within. Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Horror Within Me. It is my honor to spend another spooky Sunday with you all, and welcome back to those of you who join me every week, and welcome to those that this may be your first time here. This is a podcast dedicated to the world of horror, so if you're a horror fan, you're probably in the right spot. Another fun thing that this week marks is the last episode of the September School Special Series. I've been having so much fun with this series, and... We're going to end it with Stephen King's It. So we're going to be discussing the Losers Club more specifically and parts of the, you know, the miniseries, the book, and the two movies that were released. Because they all kind of have elements that are relevant to this week's episode. But before we get into it, um, I just want to recap a little bit on what we've done so far on the September School Specials. We've done... Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, we've done Scream, and then we've done Child's Play. So this is the perfect way to end it. The ultimate guy, Pennywise, who feeds off the fear of children, really ties it all in together. So I'm excited to do this episode. I think that this is going to be a really fun one to look into and very psychological. So if you're into that kind of shit, stick around. (laughs) I also would like to point out that my voice is a little hoarse and gone today. So the weather's changing here in New Jersey. And also, so my allergies and my sinuses are all messed up. And on top of that, I went to a friend's wedding yesterday, had an amazing time, but my voice is now recovering and it's probably a little different. So bear with me on this. If I sound a little weird, it's because I was screaming all night, singing and laughing and all that stuff that you get to do, which is a really good thing. So I'm okay with it. Um, So again, Stephen King's it's iconic. So unfortunately, I don't know what it is. I'm a huge, huge Stephen King fan, and I'm trying to catch up on the books. I think I've mentioned this before, but I own the Stephen King book it, but I'm so intimidated by it, and I always start it, and I don't get that far into it because I maybe have like ADHD or something like that, and I just it's overwhelming, and I never finish it. But I did see the nine the the miniseries, and I did see both of the movies. So, and I've read some back things that are included in the book. So the episode is going to kind of tie into about a a bunch of everything, but before we get into the bulk of the episode in the show, um, things in horror movie news, we did get our first real trailer of Hellraiser from Hulu. I think it looks pretty good. And uh, what got me is the voice of Pinhead was was very different than what I expected, but I'm very surprised and happy with it. I'm I don't really read into the comments on what was happening and if people like it and if they don't like it because you know what, the horror community can be harsh, and people in general can be very harsh. And I'm I'm all about supporting and and exploring different elements and different things to give everyone a different representation in in the world. So. If you are not for this new Hellraiser, that is your prerogative. You are allowed to have those feelings. But do not bash and do not take away from everyone else because of your personal opinions. Keep that shit to yourself and keep it moving. There's enough things in the world for everybody. We're trying to now anyway. So if it's something that is not for you, go find something that is and leave us the hell alone. (laughs) And... That's my take on that. As far as, as far as Halloween ends, I'm still waiting. I can't find tickets to the damn theater. I'm like every day checking for this shit. We're three weeks away and still nothing. Um, but we are getting little TV spots. I think that's all we're going to get are the multiple TV spots. I think if you add all the TV spots up together, we get like a whole new trailer. So that's pretty cool. Um, not much to report on that. Uh, it, it is what it is. I'm just patiently waiting at this point for that. Um, so that's really it that I've been paying attention to. 
uh, the Hard Within Me Facebook and TikTok is doing a its own version of Countdown to Halloween for weekend uh, one weekend recommendation movie. The first movie we recommended yesterday for the first official weekend of fall and spooky season was the 1987 film Monster Squad. So check it out. I think it's streaming on Hulu, if I'm correct. If not, I'm sure just type it in Google and you'll find it. You'll be able to rent it on something. Um, awesome movie. Scared the shit out of me as a child. I don't know. Dracula and the Wolfman really, really scared the shit out of me. But that's this weekend's movie to watch. And another thing that we were talking about is the old uh, board games, Nightmare, the trilogy Nightmare games and Atmosphere, where it was a VHS tape where you had to play on a board and then they would stop and it was like a 10 minute timer. Anyone else remember that? I don't know, but they have another version of it on Amazon and it's on sale right now for I think like 31 and some change and it utilizes smartphones to play the game. So it sounds really cool and I'm going to be checking that out too. So stay tuned for that and check out the socials to see any feedback for that. And that's this. That's it for this week's horror movie news or horror related news that I have found and wanted to talk about. But now... It is time for Terrifying Trivia. This week's Terrifying Trivia question is directly related to this week's episode, which is about Stephen King's It, and the question is as follows. What does It claim its true name is in the novel? Again, the question is, what does It claim its true name is in the novel? Stick around to the end of the show to find out the answer. Okay, so let's get started because we're going to talk about a few different things because this is a very uh, heavy topic, I would like to say, um, in this community. If you want to, you know, sticking with the theme of September school specials and really trying to dissect and and understand and analyze these these movies. And Stephen King is so good at character development. So these characters are very well developed and thought out and have a lot of time invested in all of them. There are no really any filler characters. So it's going to be a moment, you know, it's going to be a little bit of trigger warning maybe for some topics that might be brought up. So just be aware of that, but let's talk about the, the, the media, right? Stephen King's, it was a novel. It was a miniseries and it was movies, right? The novel was released in 1986, the miniseries was released in 1990, and then the two movies, one in 2017, which was Chapter 1, and one in 2019, which was Chapter 2, um, which focused heavily on the material from the book, obviously. The movies more so than, you know, tried to do a little bit more than the miniseries was able to with rating R and things like that. So the premise on Wikipedia of the novel goes as this. The story follows the experiences of seven children as they are terrorized by an evil entity that exploits the fears of its victims and to disguise itself while hunting its prey, primarily as Pennywise the Dancing Clown. So that is the Wikipedia novel um, premise, and it pretty much details that. So everyone that knows it, there's some iconic things that you relate to it. You think of the balloons. You think of the the phrase, you know, we all float down here and the little paper boat and poor Georgie. So if you haven't seen or read or heard anything of Stephen King's It, I'm not sure how as a horror fan, it's almost impossible. First of all, my favorite, and this is my opinion, is the, the miniseries because I think that's when I grew up watching it. Tim Curry scared the living shit out of me as Pennywise, especially this scene. I don't know why this scene bothered me or stuck out to me as much as it did, but the scene when I think it was Eddie was in the showers and he came out through the drain. Oh, I couldn't shower. I didn't close my eyes in the shower for months. I stared down looking at the drain to make sure that Pennywise didn't come out and get me. I mean, I was scarred. And his voice, even though he was so comical, he just turned evil in like an instant. And it just really, really got me in the teeth and everything, like the music, everything about it was great. Don't get me wrong. I did enjoy the movies. But here's my issue that I had with the two movies. I did not, uh, I'm probably going to get backlash for this. I am 
it is what it is. I did not like the CGI effects of the monsters. Pennywise was fine, but like the lady in the house with Bev and the infected guy, I forget what the hell they call him. They just were so, to me, it looked CGI. It didn't look, it looked unrealistic, like too overdone. I would have liked practical effects more and just, I think it would have made it more scary for me. There was also a scene, Pennywise had me cracking up all the time in the movies. There was like a scene where he's in the basement when he chases George, not George, when he chases Bill through the water, he's like screaming and you think in the trailer is going to be this terrifying scene. And it was kind of scary to him down there, but then he fucking, he fucking flops on the landing of the stairs, like a fish and like slides back into the water. And I'm like, do they try to be this comical? Like, I was curious. But we're going to to discuss this. What we're going to discuss are the seven Losers Club members. And they are Bill Dembro, Ben Hanscon, Beverly Marsh, Richie Toyser, Eddie uh, Kasbrack, Mike Hanlon, and Stan Uris. Those are our seven losers. And then... The thing that I want to explore that's so heavily, heavily involved in the story of these children, aside from this supernatural um, entity that's trying to, to, to kill them and feed, which comes only every 27 years, is the, it's based in 1958 and 1985 when they're adults. But I want to focus more on the 1958 um, era and... The children, because I'll touch a little bit on adults, but the children is what we're here to talk about. And they all are severely bullied by Henry Bowers and his gang. So all of the children of the Losers Club are about 11 years old. Henry Bowers is 12. and He's sadistic and he's a terrible bully. And each one of the Losers Club are targeted for different things. Like Bill is targeted with his stutter. Ben is obese. Beverly is just a female in the 50s and it's it's is like uh, assaulted and accosted sexually. It's very disturbing. Um we have Richie who's you know bully, I think he has glasses, but also he's like the comedic relief. He's like the goof class clown. Um we have Eddie who's like a severe hypochondriac as a result of his mother's overprotectiveness. We have Mike Hanlon who is Literally only targeted for being black in Derry, Maine. Um, they're the only black family in Derry. And then we have Stan, who is targeted for his religion, for being Jewish, who's also very skeptical of everything that's going on with Pennywise. But Henry Bowers is also like, um, what is the word I'm trying to say? He is, his father is abusive mentally and physically to him and also very racist. And he's just brought up in that kind of, environment and it spills out into his life outside of there but really fucked up ways like these kids are severely bullied and it just takes you into this thing where even back then when this was being written to today the the issue with bullying is so out of control i mean i just think about like the different topics like this is Characters that are written by a man based off of things going on in the world, you know, racism, religious, you know, um, persecution, people being overweight, being a female, just having anything that does not fall into federal white male ideals, you know, if you didn't fit this picture perfect thing. And if you look at like, I think a Henry Bowers in the miniseries was portrayed like a James Dean kind of, not James Dean, but yeah, almost like, you know, had the slick black hair, the leather jacket, like what you're, think of, what you think of when you think of, you know, the guys of the 50s, Elvis hair, whatever. And anything other than that was unrealistic. And to throw in the mix, this evil that comes and feeds on the fears of children Every 27 years, I mean, the scene with Georgie, poor Georgie, he's six years old, right? Just wants to play out. There's a huge storm and 
Penny, we meet Pennywise in the sewer and he's talking to Georgie and it's another theme of not talking to strangers. And I believe in the, I don't know if it's in the, I think it's in the book. Cause I think I've read this part and it's very graphic where he's like, I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. And Pennywise manipulates him and he says, well, I'm Pennywise the dancing clown and you're Georgie. So we're not strangers. And it's, it's, it's hard to read and watch because it's a child and you know, you're building this here. Like, you know, it doesn't end well for him. And it's a hard thing to watch because it's, it's, I think it's a hard thing to watch because it's hap It happens in real life. Maybe it's not a supernatural clown in the sewer, but there are real life predators out there on children and bullies and racism and sexual assault. And each character poor, you know, poor Bill, who is the quote unquote leader of the losers club, his brother was Georgie, who was murdered. They or you know, they never found out his arms were broken. He bled to death. His parents basically just fell into a sort of depression and withdrawn. And he got this eleven year old who lost his brother, but now he doesn't have the support of his parents because they don't know how to deal with it. Because back in the fifties, what did people do? You know, were there were there enough mental health, you know, um ways to get mental health for that for those situations because let's be honest even today do we have enough mental health no people in my opinion don't they can't they don't think it's real if they can't see it does that make sense like mental health is something that if you it's not a disease that you can see it's not a condition that you can see so they don't understand it you can look normal and your brain can be you can be depressed you can be bipolar and no, not enough people seem to understand that. And there's not enough investment, in my opinion, in mental health. So we're looking at the 1950s, right? It's even worse than for, for everyone, everyone, gays, black people, obese people, women. And it kind of is a perfect time to bring this up now and talk about this topic because of the environment that we're in, the climate that we're in now in America because of certain things that have changed in our in our country and had the freedoms for people to re and re step back out and feel validated in their racism and their homophobia and being backed up by people in power to showcase that again and trying to go back to the 1950s I've said this for years we are we have made such strides and now we're losing them because this because of people like that so we have bill and then we have poor Ben, who is bullied because of being fat, which is a terrible word, but that's what the word is that they used. Um, he was obese, and he was the biggest target of Henry. Um, and Henry Bowers, I think he tried to carve his name into his stomach. It was very graphic. And then, you know, Beverly, her dad was abusive, and it was so... Oh, the scene with her in the bathroom with the blood was very graphic and I it was very scary. And then you have Richie. Uh he just tried to laugh everything off. And I can relate to Richie as a goofball myself, who has a dark past of traumas and things that you try to overcome. And then you have Eddie, who that was weird. His mother was very strange, a very strange woman, and it was reflective on him. And it's like, turns out that he didn't even have asthma. He just, you know, thought he did because of his mom. And I think it's like, they said it was water or something in the inhaler. Like, they even, like, the pharmacist was involved in that. You should have called CP CPS, bitch. Like, what the hell are you doing? Um, and then, Mike, we don't have to even describe the problem with racism in America. And we don't even have to touch on the fact of where we were in 1958 with that. I mean, that speaks for itself. And then Stan, the Jewish thing is just terrible. You know, the Holocaust, things like that. It's just very rough. So yes, this is a very deep topic for the last September school special, but taking all of that and then adding in Pennywise, who is this sadistic creature that it's not human. So it, but it understands fear. It knows that fear equals better tasting food for feeding. And 
does things. And I think in the book, it just takes on the roles of like Frankenstein or and other things. But in the movie, obviously, we don't see too much of that because I think licensing issues probably, I don't know. Maybe it costs too much. But anyways, it's terrifying and terrorizes these children, but also knows that Henry Bowers is this evil child and recognizes it and teams up with him to also continue to antagonize. These kids have no escape. Their home lives are, are, are it always goes back to the home life with children and predators. This is a topic that we've just talked, we've just talked about it over and over again this, this month. Um, I think that we need to really showcase and have the discussions about that because it's still happening. Even like the movie, the black phone, this is off topic really quickly, but another example of, you know, poor life with poor kids, home life and being abducted, things like that. But yeah, Pennywise, we love Pennywise for a character perspective from a horror movie perspective, but the losers club, what's great about the losers club is they find each other this band of misfits that are all being bullied all join and they and they reclaim their power and call themselves the losers club because they need a community and it's a support group and they and they help each other and they vow to come back after they def- if the, if pennywise isn't dead at the end and they all move on except for mike What's interesting with the adult versions is how some of them stay in that mindset of who they were as children. Some of them got over it. Like like um, Ben lost the weight and became you know, fit and successful. But Beverly ended up marrying an abusive husband, who she ends up leaving eventually. But it it's interesting that you have different sides of things. Richie stays comedic, um, but Mike stays... I stays in dairy, but the people that leave forget. And I wonder if that's like, you know, it's obviously supernatural, but if you think about it, have we all like tried to escape certain things and forget certain things from our past? Right. I know I have, I'm no longer living in the, in the city that I grew up in. I don't run into people like that. And it's strange when I go back and I'm not far, but it's just a different thing. And it's like when you return uh, memories unlock again, that you don't, normally think about because you're not getting those visual um, reminders or people. So it makes sense that these people moved away and 27 years have passed. I mean, it's not a, it's, it's a long time (laughs) since they were there. So even a normal trauma or situation or memory fades after 27 years. Yes, you would think that they would never forget that, but they psycho- psychologically, you can block things out, all that stuff. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not here to give mental health. I'm here to talk about Pennywise and, and, and dissect and analyze the Losers Club. But I love that they all banded together and they defeat it, not only Pennywise, but they defeat it, Henry Bowers, in a way. He gets locked up in a psychiatric ward. And even when he gets out later on as adults, I believe it's Eddie that ends up killing him. He's, you know... It's a story of survival and community and support, which is a theme in almost all of the movies that we've discussed, right? You know, the Nightmare on Elm Street kids, they had support. They always, and they're getting picked off one by one. But the Losers Club, we do see the death of two. Stan, who just gets the phone call from Mike and just can't take it. And we have the, the suicide of Stan, which is a tough thing. And it's a very, you know, weird topic going on now. Like even with like TikTok, you have to say unalive. And I don't know if it's my age or what. And I'm not, maybe maybe it's a generation gap. But I don't think that we should be shying away from the word. I understand things are triggering, but it's reality and things like that. And we have to be able to face the truth of things to get past and through them. And that's just my reality. And I'm not going to dismiss other people's reality, but with Stan, it's a trigger for him and he just can't take it. And it's another representation of something traumatic. 
in in our world today. And then you have um, Eddie, who I believe is is killed during the battle, which is another tragic, you know, part of the of the story. But also, the sexual things that are happening in the book and with Beverly, it's her husband, her 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 father. Is there's a part in the book that's not in the movies because it's too graphic. These are eleven year old kids. Remember, they they say they, they they all band at the end and they decide just like I think they seal the the bond by taking turns sleeping with Beverly in the caves or something or the sewers or something, which is very weird and and that is I can understand why it's left out of movies because it's just not you know child you know it's just weird to me but if you really dig into that it's like she is assaulted sexually and she doesn't know how to communicate otherwise so she's like i know that this is something that boys like so let's do it which is sad because did she she never got the the proper mental health help either and she grew up in an abuse and, and ended up in an abusive relationship as unfortunately so many people do because they go to what's familiar and they don't realize it until they get the tools to get out of it which eventually she does which is amazing and i believe her and ben end up together which is cool because they he had a crush on her the whole time and he's turned out to be a wonderful man so the 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 theme is no matter what your quote unquote it, you know, disadvantage because it's never a disadvantage. Whatever makes you different. There are bullies and there are bullies throughout your life. You don't have to just be in school or a child. There are adult bullies. There are bullies throughout every stage of life. You just need to find your people. And when you do, you will have all of the love and support that you need. Just like they, these seven children, they they band it together. They defeat it, literally the evil entity, as well as the physical and human bullies of their life. They stood up and they reclaimed their power, which is, I think, the moral of the story, in my opinion. And I think it was just an awesome, awesome story. There's a lot more to it. I'm gonna eventually read the book one day. But for those of you out there who are fans, and you've read the book, you've seen the miniseries, and you've watched the movies, comment on Facebook, tag us on Facebook, and let me know which version you like the most, which one you like the least, and if you liked my analysis of The Losers Club. But before we end the episode, we have to answer terrifying trivia. Okay, so the question, again, for terrifying trivia is... What does it claim its true name is in the novel? And the answer is Robert Bob Gray. In the novel, it Pennywise says its true name is Robert Bob Gray. Let me know in the comments if you got that right. All right. It is time to do the rating system. And we're going to do the rating system for... A couple different versions of the of Stephen King's It. And this week's rating system is going to be the iconic Red Balloon. Because that is just something you automatically think of when you think of Pennywise, right? So, as it's not fair for me to write the book. I haven't read it, so we're not going to be able to write the book. But for the 1990 miniseries, I give, the, I give it a 9 out of 10 Red Balloons. And for... The two movies, I'm going to combine them together because it's one story. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Um, I dropped it down because of the CGI people. I'm just not a fan of them. So that is what it is. (laughs) And that is the end of this week's episode of The Horror Within Me. Like, comment, review, rate. Do everything you can to show your love for the show. And stick around when there's not a new episode, go on the website for the spooky shakers that we've added. Go to TikTok for other recommendations and other content. Go on Facebook. We've just included a new Facebook group for the Heart Within Me, so it can be a lot more interactive. So go and join the group. It's a public group. It's a lot of fun. 
And as always, stay safe, but more importantly, stay spooky. <laughs> <laughs>